What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Likes, I am Laughing Coyote, and today I'm doing um, a bit of a different video. Now, a lot of you have asked me to show you how I play because you guys think that I'm really good. Again, like I said, I don't think I'm that great. Yeah, I've actually written some of these things down because I didn't want to forget anything. So, if it seems like I'm reading, uh, that's because I am reading. Anyways, so let's uh, start things off. And first off, I, I want to say this to those who are new to the game. Um, this is something that I've learned, and it's not just through video games, just in, in life, you know, in general, in real life, I've learned this. If you want to step up your game, uh, or if you want to get better at anything, you know, you have to try to challenge yourself. So if you are someone who struggles to play on, let's say, normal difficulty, and so you revert to easy difficulty because you find it easy, well, you're never going to improve. So don't play on easy unless you just want to mess around and fine. But if you really want to improve, do not play on easy. Play on the difficulty that challenges you. If you keep doing the thing that you are already good at, you're not, I mean, you're just not going to get any better. It's just going to be the same old crap. So uh, I urge you to play on at least normal difficulty. I myself play on hard difficulty and uh, hardest as well. Uh, when I practice, I practice on the hardest. And then when I actually play the game, I play on hard. Because when you practice on hardest, uh, hard then is no longer hard. Because you've played on something harder than hard, right? And that's really the idea behind me saying, challenge yourself. Play on the difficulty that you're not comfortable on, and that is how you will improve. All right, so that's the first tip. Second tip. So here's a list of shots that I have tested, and I have concluded that they are quite OP shots. Now, there are two shots, basically, that I love playing. If you see my career mode, I mean, that's literally all I play to the point where some of you guys tell me please play a different shot it's getting a bit boring but uh yeah so the off drive um is very op and then there's the um the shot on the leg side or the leg glance so the areas to play these shots in is basically for the off drive it's basically the point uh and the cover you know or you could play a cut shot as well but uh, you have to watch out for that if there are slips in place you might nick it to the slip so that's a very risky shot so i won't recommend it all that much but if you get it perfectly almost every single time it's a boundary unless there's a fielder on the boundary a third man then you know obviously you're not going to get a boundary uh but yeah these are uh grounded shots just regular shots that you play on xbox with the a button and you play it with the x button on playstation so you just regular shots you know um you can play lofty shots but you have to watch out for the field uh, fielding uh, field set in other words if there's a fielder on the rope you know backward point or you know uh deep cover or something like that then don't play a lofty shot but uh, if there are fielders inside the rope, then you can go for a lofty shot. Now, those are front foot shots, by the way, the drives. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Um, back foot shots. The off uh, side back foot punch is a very, very OP shot, except when played uh, aggressively. In other words, when you loft it up, then it's not very good. You will literally nick it back to the keeper, the slips, or point. It's not going to go anywhere. Don't play that shot. Actually, to be honest, besides the cut shot, there isn't a single shot on the offside, on the back foot, that I would recommend you play lofty or aggressive. Uh, don't just avoid that at all costs. No back foot lofty shots. Only front foot lofty shots on the offside. Like I said, the offside that I'm talking about, the cover area, the point, you know, backward point, the third man you can include in there as well, which is a bit behind, you know, but um, you can include that in there as well. But watch out for the slips when you're uh, playing that shot because the slips will get you. All right. Now then, the other OP shot, which is the leg glance, that's obviously on the leg side. So that's square backward square you know mid wicket ish but not past mid wicket so don't go into that uh i don't know what to call it that mid on sort of um 
what's the word for it? That cow corner, I think that's the right uh, area. Um, so don't go past the deep mid wicket, sort of, you know, mid wicket, deep mid wicket, that area. Um, you can play behind, you know, fine leg, long leg. You can play uh, in those areas and you can play them lofty. Uh, now, this is the thing with the leg side shot because when you play a back foot shot, then it becomes a hook or a pull. And you know those shots can be very, very OP in real life as well. They're not easy to pull off in real life, but in the game, they're very easy to pull off. So you can play a lofty or aggressive shot off the back foot on the leg side. Um, so yeah, those are the two shots that I, I mean, I abuse them a lot. If you watch my career mode, you will see that's all I do. Um, so yeah, if you're uh, looking for some shots to avoid, the straight on shot, it's one of the worst shots ever. If you play it grounded, and if you mistime it even a little bit, you'll uh, put it straight into the hands of the bowler or mid on or mid off, and you'll be gone. You'll lose your wicket. Again, if you play the lofty shot, you have to get it perfect. Like it has to be absolutely perfect, or you're just gonna sky it straight down the the pitch. It's gonna it's gonna go nowhere. It's just gonna go straight into the hands of the fielder, and you'll be out. So avoid the straight on shot. Uh, avoid playing shots on the mid on mid off uh, sort of area so that's straight on sort of area you know avoid that um, like I said if you're a, a, an advanced player and you want to spice up your game you want to play different uh, sort of shots go for those areas challenge yourselves but if you're new to the game and you want those OP shots yeah those shots the straight on shots yeah avoid those they don't really work all that well well they haven't worked for me and I mean you can watch the career mode almost always that I've played it um, I've either gotten out or I've nicked it or there was a chance of me getting out or you know it was just not, it was not good basically now I will show you some clips of me absolutely middling that and you know hitting it out of the park as well but like I said I've been playing this game for a very long time so you know if you're a beginner you're probably not gonna be able to get much from those shots now those are some of the shots to avoid some of now another set of uh, shots that I uh, would advise um, against uh, some of the more advanced shot if you're a beginner you know stay away from playing the special shots you know the uh, those are the unorthodox shots that you play with the LB button if you're interested in playing them and testing them out yeah you ho you press the press the LB or the L1 button on PlayStation and that's how you play him. You just tap it once, it automatically um, engages the special shot thing, I guess. I don't know how to say that. But um, if you press it again, then it'll go away. Then you'll just play a regular traditional shot. If you're a beginner, like I said, I recommend playing traditional shots. Only the shots I told you to play. And even the shots that I said you shouldn't play. The traditional, the straight on shots and shots like that. You can play them too. They're not that dangerous. The shots, you know, these unorthodox shots, these pre-meditated um, shots are obviously, I mean, in real life as well, very hard to pull off. And uh, you have to get the uh, timing perfectly. And if you're a beginner, you will have a very hard time uh, pulling it off successfully at least uh, I mean I still have hard time with it that's why you will rarely see me do it another thing is dancing down the track that is you know when you come down the track and spank it over the rope it is one of the greatest feeling when you get that perfectly but I highly advise against it because like I said even I am unable to uh, get perfect timing on it every single time. I mean, you, if you watch my career, I think I've done it like twice or maybe three times um, perfectly, but I have gotten out uh, doing that a lot more than I've gotten sixes from it. So I would advise against it. And once you get uh, once you get comfortable at playing the game, obviously, then you can uh, play those shots. And you know, I mean, by then you'll be pretty good at the game, and then you'll be able to judge the the timing and all that a lot better. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, just keep in mind, look, all the shots that I said to avoid. Um, they're great shots. I do play them. I don't play them as often. It's just that here's the thing: those shots will get you sixes and fours and all that as well. It's just that they're hard, hard, harder to pull off than you know the shots that I said you should play. Those shots have a higher percentage of getting you out. The other shots have a lower percentage of getting you out, and that's really all that you know I'm basing this on. Uh, you can get a six on pretty much any shot, any delivery. 
um, that is possible. Uh, but if you're good enough, I know I'm not good enough for shots to play, obviously. Now then, um, when to play the shot, that's something that I get a lot. How do you uh, time it perfectly? How do you get that ideal timing? Um, I'm not, I don't know if I've got it down perfectly, but I think I have a pretty good understanding of when to uh, play the shot. In other words, when what's that trigger point that you should have? And in this game, um, from my experience, if you play... So basically for Yorkers, you play it before the ball lands. So the ball, while the ball is still in the air, that's when you offer the shot. For um, full length deliveries, it's when the ball is just about to land, but it hasn't landed. It's just about to land. It has not landed yet. That's when you play the shot. So Yorkers are, by the way, the marker will turn blue for Yorkers. For full length deliveries, the marker will turn yellow, I think. And uh, then there's the length delivery, the good length. Now those are a bit tricky. That's the reason they call them good length. Um, I think you should play them just when they land and it normally works, but then sometimes they'll ball a slower delivery or a faster delivery. And obviously that will mess you up. These are just rules of thumb for normal deliveries. Obviously if they change the pace, you know, well that's kind of the point. They're gonna throw you off. Um, so you're gonna have to watch out for them uh, for that and you're gonna have to sort of work that out yourself So those are uh, Oh the short delivery obviously the red marker So when you get a red marker that means it's a short delivery then for that you have to kind of judge it yourself uh, there's no real uh, pointer I can give you for that because you have to wait for the ball to sort of get close to your body so you cannot offer the shot right when it lands. It has to land and you have to offer the shot after the ball lands. And that, you know, like I said, you just gotta figure that out yourself. There's not much, I, I mean, I don't know what marker or what there is that I can tell you that will be sort of a rule of thumb because there is no real, there's no point of reference there, you know? Like with the other ones, I said, okay, if it's before it lands, after it lands, so on and so forth. Now here it is after it lands, but when after it lands? That I don't know how to help you. I mean, I'll try to show you in the video and then you can practice as well and figure it out yourself. But yeah, for the short one after the ball lands for the good land delivery right when it lands. You can be a little late, by the way. This game actually rewar rewards you if you're a bit late on the shot. Uh, so try to be a little late on the good length deliveries. Um, and full length and uh, uh, Yorkers, you have to be a bit early then, so before it lands. And um, so yeah, those are uh, trigger points for playing shots and getting the timing right. Now how to know which shot to play, right? I mentioned those OP shots. Um, well, how do I know to play the off drive or the front foot or the back foot and all that? So I'm going to go into that. So if you're a beginner, uh, keep it simple, you know. Um, and really the, the simplest way I can put it is, obviously it's much more complicated than this, but the simplest way I can put it in, it, if the ball is landing in the line of the stump, so if it's landing uh, you know, I mean where it's pitching where the ball is bouncing if that is in line with the stumps or on the leg side You play the leg side shot if the ball is on the offside uh, You know outside of the line of the stumps and you play the offside shot It's just simple as that but obviously there are then in swingers out swingers leg cutters this and that and flippers and googlies and doosras and this and that so for those, then you'll have to watch out. So if it's an in-swinger, let's say, and the ball is a little outside of off, then you have to play a leg shot. You will be like, wait a minute, you just said if it's outside of off, you play an off shot, offside shot, drive, whatever, right? So yeah, those are obviously the exceptions. Uh, you have to watch out for them. Um, if it's an in-swinger, a little off, uh, offside out, off, outside off, I should say. You play a leg shot if it's in line but it's an outswinger then you have to play and you know it's the opposite of basically the leg shot you have to then play an offside shot and uh, that those can be tricky and most ballers do swing them 
So yeah, that's gonna be a bit tricky, but you just that's just basically practice. Practice, 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 and you'll get it eventually. But the rule of thumb is if it's in line or on the leg side, play the leg side shot. If it's not in line and on the offside, play the offside shot. It's just I cannot make it any simpler than that. And uh, if it's right in line and you are confident in your timing ability, then you can whack it straight over, you know, the baller's head, the umpire's head, and hit the side screen if that's something, you know, you want to do. Like I said, those shots are very hard to get right, so only attempt them if you're really confident in your ability. Just spank it right over the umpire's head and uh, bash that side screen. All right, so that's that. Now, um, oh, how to select which foot to use, front foot or back foot? To be honest, that's very simple, and the game actually makes it very simple. So first off, I'm going to tell you the simple version for beginners. If the ball marker or the pitch marker, you know, the marker on the pitch, if that's green, yellow, or blue, you play a front foot shot. If it's red, you play a back foot shot. Simple as that, right? If you're a beginner, learn that, and that's it. That's the end of that. If you're an advanced player, however, and you want to play different kind of shots, you don't always want to play the same shot on the same delivery. Well, it's it, it, can, it can be tricky. I don't really know how to explain it, but uh, it depends on the surface. All right, so for the yellow markers and for the blue markers, all 100% of the time you have to play front foot for the red markers 100% of the time you have to play a back foot um, shot but it's that green it's that damn green <laughs> marker there's a reason it's called good length I, I say it again because it's very good it's it's not uh, easy for the batsman to judge you can get away with it uh, playing a back foot shot if it's a little short of length do you know what I mean? If it's a little short of length and the pitch, the surface that you're playing on is a hard surface, then it will bounce a little extra and you can get away with playing a back, back foot shot. If it's a soft surface, even if it's short of length, then you have to play a uh, regular front foot shot. So those are just uh, tips for the advanced players who want to sort of expand their shot selection. For the beginning beginners, like I said, green, yellow, blue, front foot, red, back foot. Simple as, don't think about it, don't complicate it, just move on to the next section, which is, um, let's see, what did I write? Uh, running between the wickets. Now, I don't know if I'm the best person to be uh, explaining this since... Well, if you've seen my career mode, you know I get at least one person run out every episode. So I don't, I really don't know if I should be telling you this. But um, here are some of the things that I've found that uh, you can sort of use to your advantage. So first off, there's this uh, thing in the game where you can pressure, you can put pressure on the field. And uh, that leads to overthrows. So when the baller bowls a ball, more most of the times the keeper will uh, either dive in a direction or some like that. Even though the ball is not going to the keeper, it's very weird. But the keeper tends to do that, and so it takes the keeper a bit of time to recover from that. And basically, when you're pressuring the fielder, the fielder has to throw the ball at the stump, the stumps. And guess what? The keeper is still on the ground laying flat or running back to the stumps. In other words, the keeper is not backing up at the stumps. That is what I'm talking about. That will lead to overthrow, especially if you play to the point fielder or the uh, backward square fielder. Because they are only, their, their sight is, they're just seeing one stump because they're looking at uh, the stump from the sight. I mean the side so they're only seeing one stump it makes it very difficult to hit the stump and nine times out of ten they will miss the stump it will be overthrows and you'll pick up an extra run there um, so yeah you can try I'll show you I mean you are seeing it on the screen uh, that is what I'm talking about so that is a bit of a trick that you can exploit but be careful with that like I said nine times out of ten there is that one time out of ten where you will get out where they will hit the stumps and you'll be out so, you know, be very uh, cautious with that one. Uh, take it with a grain of salt, as they like to say. Now, the easy way to pick up singles, and this is, I mean, this is just, uh, it's a bit ridiculous, to be honest. But, and this only works against pace bowlers, by the way, not spinners. 
in other words, if there are fielders cl uh, close in, you know, if there are close at fielders, like silly points or even like uh, point or cover, but like they're a bit close to you, um, you know, the keeper is obviously closer to the stumps when it's the key, uh, it's a spinner. So you just block, you know, or as we like to call in Pakistan, just stop and run. So you just block and run. That's all you do. Block and run. The ball that takes forever for some reason to collect the ball and throw it at the stumps. So that's that's it. You just block and run. Block and run. Block and run. Block and run. That's it. You can do that all day long. And uh, no problems. Right? Like I said, only works for uh, pace ballers. Now do not forget to hold the RT button. That's the trigger. So that's RT on Xbox and R2 I believe on PlayStation. So that's the trigger button. Also, do not be afraid to dive. If you feel like you're going to be short, press that Y button or triangle button on PlayStation and dive mate. Just dive. All right. Do not lose your wicket because you're afraid of diving. Dive. Absolutely dive. That feature is there for you to use. Use it, please. All right, don't lose your wickets because you did not want to dive. Now, what should I talk about next? Oh, okay. Um, now, this might come as a no-brainer, but in general, just avoid the fielders, you know? It's, um, it's fairly simple, isn't it? Uh, if there's a fielder in the cover area, well, don't play a shot there. Play it on the, I don't know, towards point if the point is not there. Or play it right between cover and point. Usually they have a cover and a point or a backward point or a cover. And there is a gap in the middle. And you can find that gap. I do it all the time quite easily. Now, if you're playing career mode, by the way, your player will be very uh, low skilled. So be careful with that because you will all not be able to time the ball and middle it all that well all the time. So the stop and run technique that will come in very handy if you're in the beginning of your career um, uh, so that's that um, oh confidence meter the confidence meter and the stamina meters are very 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 important when you first start batting uh, your confidence meter will be full but it will be red now red means uh, that your confidence is uh, low so it's bad basically just think of it let's just simplify it Conf confidence is low red equals bad which means that your stats your skill points you know your uh, ratings uh, attributes whatever you want to call them they will have a negative effect on it uh, in other words uh, let's say you have two bars in uh, attacking shots and you have red uh, confidence level then your player will play like someone with one and a half bar of attacking shots you know what I mean there's a negative impact on your skills when that is red so try to block and run or just rotate the strike you know play those uh, grounded shots do not loft it it will I mean if you're good if you're really good you can from the if you watch one of those videos I scored a hundred of 29 deliveries so I played six like I, I hit sixes from like the very first delivery so you can do that uh, if you're really good but I'm speaking to those who are beginners if it's red the confidence meters block and run or just you know find the gaps play grounded shots wait for the meter to get yellow yellow is neutral so when the confidence meter is yellow that means that there's no boost but there's no penalty either so there's no negative effect but there's no positive effect either what do i mean by boost or positive effect well that we'll talk about when your confidence meter is green and that's a bit uh, darkish sort of green so there are two kind of green there's a lime green and then there's a darkish green so the darkish green means good uh, which has a which gives you a moderate boost so it increases your skills a little bit just by a little bit not too much so yeah the dark green means you're good the light green means excellent so it has a significant boost it gives you a positive uh, boost it increases your skill by uh, as much as it decreases it when it's uh, red so uh, that's how the confidence meter works it's very important then there's stamina if uh, you're out of stamina you can recover it quite easily by uh, just not offering a shot which you can do by I think the default button to to offer a leave or not play a shot is pressing in the right stick 
uh, it might be different for you guys. But that is the default uh, button. I think that's the default button. I might have put it to that. I'm um, not entirely sure, but I think that is. I mean, if you don't know the controls, just go to settings and see the controls. Um, quite simple to figure it out. Um, so that's that. The stamina affects your strength and running, by the way. Uh, that's the only thing it affects. So some of your, if you're really low on stamina, um, you can still hit sixes. Um, but uh, the chances of them actually going over the rope is reduced by very little. It's very marginal, you know, so you might not even feel it. But if you're playing career mode, uh, there's a chance for of you to get injured if the stamina is really low and you're still playing aggressive shots. So there is a chance of getting injured in career mode. And if the stamina is really, really low, then uh, avoid risky singles because your player will run very slowly. Uh, that is that and the dive when you dive with low stamina I've noticed that the dive is not as extensive it's not you don't reach as much uh, which is obviously not very good so you don't want to do that all right um, is there anything else that I can cover um, I think I've covered pretty much everything there is to the game I think this is getting pretty long already but um, yeah, let me know if there's anything that you're confused about. I will try to help you out in the comments. And uh, I hope I covered everything. I'm not entirely sure if I did or did not do that. But um, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to put... Because right now I'm just recording audio. There's no video footage in front of me. So I'm going to try to put uh, video footage of each thing that I talk about. So it matches. So you can you have a visual thing to look at as well as an audible, obviously. Uh, so yeah, that's that. I hope this was helpful. I hope um, you will imp this will help you improve your game. And uh, if it does, let me know. And if it doesn't, let me know still, uh, so I can improve uh, my next tutorial if there is a next story. I don't even know if I'll do another one, but I might do it if too many people are confused about this. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode, which is probably going to be the career mode. Until then, have a nice...